Hello and welcome back to AP Computer Science Principles. I am Professor Cunningham and today we are taking on a topic that is very simple in theory, but extraordinarily complex in practice. And that topic is copyright. Now, I'm sure that everybody watching this video has some kind of an idea of what copyright is. Everyone is generally on board with the idea that if you make something, that something is yours and you get to do with it what you want and you get to stop other people from using it in ways you don't want it used. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Let's say you are an artist or a musician or a writer or a YouTuber. Anything that you make, every piece of music, every video, every picture, every word that you write is yours and you get automatically a thing called an all rights reserved copyright. You don't have to do anything special to get this copyright. By creating the thing, that copyright is yours. Of course, this can get complicated if multiple people make something that's very similar and they have a hard time figuring out whether or not one person copied off of the other or who had the idea or created the thing first. But we're going to set all those complications aside for now and focus just on the definitions of copyright and what rights a creator has. In general, the copyright that you get for creating something gives you five basic rights. The first is the right to reproduce the work. Someone else can't just make a copy of your work without your permission. The second right is to create what's called derivative works, which change the work in some way for some purpose. You also have the right to distribute or sell your work as you see fit. You have the right to display the work in public, although any graffiti artist will tell you that you do have to be careful where it is that you do so. And the right to play or transmit audio works via digitization, which we've talked about earlier. When you create something original, these five rights are yours and only you get to decide who gets to do each of these things. Like with just about anything else though, there are exceptions. For example, copyright doesn't last forever. Here in the United States, the copyright to a particular piece of art really only extends to 70 years past the original author's death. After that time, the art becomes what's called public domain. For example, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories, died in 1930, well over 70 years ago. So if I wanted to, for example, make a YouTube series where I read his stories out loud, I would be allowed to do that because his works are in the public domain. Anyone can use them or modify them for any reason. You may have heard stories recently as of this video of certain characters being put in the public domain, like Disney's Steamboat Willie, as well as the original Winnie the Pooh, which has spawned several derivative works. Now, public domain is a fairly simple and understandable idea. 70 years after an author's death, their work is free for all. However, a much, much less simple example of an exception to copyright law is fair use. For example, if I were to, I don't know, put some song lyrics up here on the screen, or if I was to make a video reacting to an old movie, wouldn't that be a violation of copyright? Well, the answer is maybe. That's where we come to this idea of fair use. Fair use is the idea that you can use copyrighted materials for limited reasons such as criticism, comment, news reporting, or in my case, education. As an example of what I consider to be fair use of copyrighted material, I'm going to go ahead and quote Khan Academy right now. Ultimately, only a judge can determine if a particular use is fair use, and the judge will consider four factors. What's the purpose and character of the use? Is it educational versus entertainment, nonprofit versus for-profit, transformative versus iterative? What's the nature of the copyrighted work? Is it factual or is it fictional? You can't really copyright the facts of someone's life, but you can copyright your biography of a person. How much of the copyrighted work is used and how significant is that portion of copyrighted work? If I were to sit here and play an entire movie for you, that would be much more likely to be a violation of copyright than just playing a quick 30 second clip. And finally, what's the impact of the use on the potential market for and value of the copyrighted work? For example, is me putting this definition up here making you less likely to go to Khan Academy and utilize their, um, their services? I would say no, because I'm going to be putting a link to this down in the description and really trying to direct people to use Khan Academy's services more rather than less. 
If a nonprofit educational website uses a paragraph from a history book in an article, it is likely to be considered fair use. If a commercial entertainment website streams the entire historical drama from a film studio, it is almost certainly not fair use. The question of fair use does not always have a clear answer, so court cases help to expand on and specify the four factors, particularly what it means for use to be transformative. You can get a feel of what the courts deem to be fair use by looking through the past court cases that I will be putting in the description of this video. So what do you think? I just quoted a fair amount of what's written on Khan Academy's website, copyrighted by them, but I'm doing so in an attempt to drive you to learn more about the subject by going to Khan Academy. However, what I think is fair use and what you think is fair use isn't particularly relevant. Like the thing I just quoted says, the only person that can really tell you whether a particular use is fair or not is a judge. And that's why this gets so complicated. Anytime you start getting courts involved, things are going to get very complex very quickly. For example, even if what I just quoted isn't considered fair use, Khan Academy would have to bring some sort of case against me and ask me to take it down or change it in some way, and so long as they don't do that, I'm probably in the clear. On the other hand, YouTube, for example, has algorithms that sometimes go through and start flagging copyrighted content whether or not it's considered to be fair use, and it's up to the content creator to push against that, which has been an issue in previous videos I've made in the past. These issues get even more complicated now that we live in an age where it's trivially easy to, to copy somebody else's work just by right-clicking and hitting save image, right? It's so much easier for us now to find, use, change, and redistribute stuff that we find on the internet, and a lot of those are indeed copyright infringements. Taking someone's picture, making a meme out of it, and putting it up on Reddit is technically a violation of copyright. Now, as I said before, this video is not intended to be a comprehensive look at copyright. It's just a surface level look at the ideas and vocabulary involved. If you want to learn more, and you definitely should learn more, I'm gonna go ahead and put a bunch of links down in the description to other articles and videos that you can watch so that you can get a better idea of what copyright is, what constitutes a violation of copyright, and most importantly, how fair use and public domain work. In the next video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how creators can assert and manage their copyrights via something called Creative Commons, but for now, I think that's good enough for one video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time.